They do not want to destroy human establishments or the human presence. Instead, they wish to use these for their own benefit. Their intention is employment, not destruction. They feel that they are in the right because they believe that they are saving the world. Some even believe that they are saving humanity from itself. But this perspective does not serve your greater interests, nor does it foster wisdom or self-determination within the human family. Yet because there are forces of good within the greater community of worlds, you have allies. We represent the voice of your allies, the allies of humanity. We are not here to use your resources, or to take from you what you possess. We do not seek to establish humanity as a client state, or as a colony for our own uses. Instead, we wish to foster strength and wisdom within humanity, because we support this throughout the greater community. Our role, then, is quite essential, and our information is very needed, because at this time even people who are aware of the presence of the visitors, are not yet aware of their intentions. People do not understand the visitors' methods, and they do not comprehend the visitors' ethics or morality. People think the visitors are either angels or monsters, but in reality, they are very much like you in their needs. If you could see the world through their eyes, you would understand their consciousness and their motivation. But to do that, you would have to venture beyond your own. The visitors are engaged in four fundamental activities, in order to gain influence within your world. Each of these activities is unique, but they are all coordinated together. They are being carried out, because humanity has been studied for a long time. Human thought, human behavior, human physiology and human religion have been studied for some time. These are well understood by your visitors, and will be used for their own purposes. The first area of activity of the visitors, is to influence individuals in positions of power and authority. Because the visitors do not want to destroy anything in the world or harm the world's resources, they seek to gain influence over those whom they perceive to be in positions of power, within government and religion primarily. They seek contact, but only with certain individuals. They have the power to make this contact, and they have the power of persuasion. Not all of those they contact will be persuaded, but many will be. The promise of greater power, greater technology and world domination will intrigue and incite many individuals. And it is these individuals with whom the visitors will seek to establish a liaison. There are very few people in the governments of the world who are being so affected, but their numbers are growing. The visitors understand the hierarchy of power, because they themselves live by it, following their own chain of command, you might say. They are highly organized, and very focused in their endeavors, and the idea of having cultures full of free-thinking individuals is largely foreign to them. They do not comprehend or understand individual freedom. They are like many technologically advanced societies in the greater community who function both within their respective worlds and in their establishments across vast reaches of space, utilizing a very well-established and rigid form of government and organization. They believe that humanity is chaotic and unruly, and they feel they are bringing order to a situation that they cannot themselves comprehend. Individual freedom is unknown to them, and they do not see its value. As a result, what they seek to establish in the world will not honor this freedom. Therefore, their first area of endeavor is to establish a liaison with individuals in positions of power and influence, in order to gain their allegiance, and to persuade them of the beneficial aspects of relationship and shared purpose. The second avenue of activity, which is perhaps the most difficult to consider from your perspective, is the manipulation of religious values and impulses. The visitors understand that humanity's greatest abilities also represent its greatest vulnerability. People's longing for individual redemption represents one of the greatest assets the human family has to offer, even to the greater community. But it is also your weakness. And it is these impulses and these values that will be used. Several groups of the visitors wish to establish themselves as spiritual agents, because they know how to speak in the mental environment. They can communicate to people directly, and unfortunately, because there are very few people in the world who can discern the difference between a spiritual voice and the visitor's voice, the situation becomes very difficult. Therefore, the second area of activity is to gain people's allegiance through their religious and spiritual motivations. Actually, this can be done quite easily, because humanity is not yet strong or developed in the mental environment. It is difficult for people to discern where these impulses are coming from. 
Many people want to give themselves to anything they think has a greater voice and a greater power. Your visitors can project images, images of your saints, of your teachers, of angels, images that are held dear and sacred within your world. They have cultivated this ability through many, many centuries of attempting to influence each other, and by learning the ways of persuasion that are practiced in many places in the greater community. They consider you primitive, and so they feel they can exert this influence and use these methods upon you. Here there is an attempt to contact those individuals who are considered sensitive, receptive and naturally given to be cooperative. Many people will be selected, but a few will be chosen based upon these particular qualities. Your visitors will seek to gain allegiance with these individuals, to gain their trust, and to gain their devotion, telling the recipients that the visitors are here to uplift humanity spiritually, to give humanity new hope, new blessings and new power indeed promising the things that people want so dearly, but have not yet found themselves. Perhaps you may wonder, how can such a thing occur? But we can assure you, that it is not difficult once you learn these skills and abilities. The effort here is to pacify and to re-educate people through spiritual persuasion. This pacification program is used differently with different religious groups depending upon their ideals and their temperament. It is always aimed at receptive individuals. Here it is hoped that people will lose their sense of discernment and will become wholly trusting of the greater power that they feel is being given to them by the visitors. Once this allegiance is established, it becomes increasingly difficult for people to discern what they know within themselves from what is being told to them. It is a very subtle but very pervasive form of persuasion and manipulation. We shall speak more on this as we proceed. Let us now mention the third area of activity, which is to establish the visitor's presence in the world, and to have people become used to this presence. They want humanity to become acclimated to this very great change that is occurring in your midst, to have you become acclimated to the visitor's physical presence, and to their effect on your own mental environment. To serve this purpose, they will create establishments here, though not in view. These establishments will be hidden, but they will be very powerful in casting an influence on human populations that are near them. The visitors will take great care and time to make sure that these establishments are effective and that enough people are in allegiance to them. It is these people who will guard and preserve the visitors' presence. This is exactly what is occurring in your world at this time. It represents a great challenge and unfortunately a great risk. This very same thing that we are describing has happened so many times in so many places in the greater community. And emerging races such as your own are always the most vulnerable. Some emerging races are able to establish their own awareness, ability and cooperation to the extent that they can offset outside influences such as these and establish a presence and a position in the greater community. Yet many races, before they even attain this freedom, fall under the control and influence of foreign powers. We understand that this information may incite considerable fear and perhaps denial or confusion. But as we observe events, we realize that there are very few people who are aware of the situation as it actually exists. Even those people who are becoming aware of the presence of alien forces are not in a position and do not have the vantage point from which they can see the situation clearly. And being ever hopeful and optimistic, they seek to give this great phenomenon as much positive meaning as they can. However, the greater community is a competitive environment, a difficult environment, 